thoughts, or hopes. All right. Number two, the second benefit. Knowing your purpose simplifies your life. It defines what you do and what you don't do. Your purpose becomes the standard you use to evaluate which activities are essential and which aren't. You simply ask, does this activity help me fulfill one of God's purposes for my life? It's good for us people who get too busy in life, right? We need to remember that question. Does this activity help me fulfill one of God's purposes for my life? Without a clear purpose, you have no foundation on which to base decisions, allocate your time, and use your resources. You will tend to make choices based on circumstances, pressures, and your mood at the moment. People who don't know their purpose try to do too much, and that causes stress, fatigue, and conflict. It is impossible to do everything people want you to do. You have just enough time to do God's will. It's impossible to do everything people want you to do. You have just enough time to do God's will. If you can't get it all done, it means you're trying to do more than God's intended you to do. Or possibly you're watching too much TV. Purpose-driven, purpose-driven, ah, I can't say that. Purpose-driven living leads to a simpler lifestyle and a saner schedule. The Bible says a pretentious, showy life is an empty life. A plain and simple life is a full life. It also leads to peace of mind. You, Lord, give perfect peace to those who keep their purposes firm and put their trust in you. Very good. We will have purpose-driven living drills (laughs) in real time. (laughs) Knowing your purpose focuses your life. It concentrates your effort and energy on what's important. You become effective by being selective. You know, it reminds us of that book, right? Mm-hmm. The one we read before we had that study. Uh, the Simple Church. Right. Simplify things. Don't have programs just to have programs. Right. Don't do things just to be busy and brag to your friends. Yes. Do, slim your life down and become effective at what you do. It's human nature to get distracted by minor issues. We play trivial pursuit with our lives. Henry David Thoreau observed that people's lives, people live lives of quiet desperation, he says. But today, a better description is aimless distraction. Many people are like gyroscopes, spinning around at a frantic pace but never going anywhere. Without a clear purpose, you will keep changing directions, jobs, relationships, churches, or other externals, hoping each change will settle the confusion or fill the emptiness in your heart. You think, maybe this time it will be different, but it doesn't solve your real problems, a lack of focus and purpose. And we always say your problems are going to follow you anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, don't live carelessly, unthinkingly. Make sure you understand what the master wants. The power of focusing can be seen in light. Diffused light has little power or impact, but you can concentrate its energy by focusing it. With a magnifying glass, the rays of the sun can be focused to set grass or paper on fire. When light is focused even more as a laser beam, it can cut through steel. Wow. There's nothing quite as potent as a focused life, one lived on purpose. The men and women who have made the greatest difference in history were the most focused. For instance, the Apostle Paul almost single-handedly spread Christianity throughout the Roman Empire. Thank you, Lydia. His secret was a focused life. He said, I am focusing all my energies on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Mm, Mm. Good advice, Apostle Paul. If you want your life to have impact, focus it. Stop dabbling. Stop trying to do it all. Do less. Prune away even good activities to do only that which matters most. Never confuse activity with productivity. You can be busy without a purpose, 
But what's the point? <laughs> Paul said, let's keep focused on that goal, those of us who want everything God has for us. Nice. Knowing your purpose motivates your life. Purpose always produces passion. Nothing energizes like a clear purpose. On the other hand, passion dissipates when you lack a purpose. Just getting out of bed becomes a major chore. <laughs> it is usually meaningless work, not overwork, that wears us down, saps our strength, and robs our joy. George Bernard Shaw wrote, this is the true joy of life, the be being used up for a purpose, recognized by yourself as a mighty one, being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clot of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. <laughs> okay, let's just review real quick since we want to just make sure we have right here. Number one was knowing your purpose gives meaning to your life. Number two, knowing your purpose simplifies your life. Number three, knowing your purpose focuses your life. Number four, knowing your purpose motivates your life. And here we have knowing your purpose prepares you for eternity. Yes. Many people spend their lives trying to create a lasting legacy on earth. They want to be remembered when they're gone. I remember a song, When I'm Gone. <laughs> Yet, what ultimately matters most will not be what others say about your life, but what God says. Ooh, mercy me. <laughs> what people fail to realize is that all achievements are eventually surpassed. Records are broken, reputations fade, and tributes are forgotten. In college, James Stobson's goal was to become the school's tennis champion. <laughs> he felt proud when his trophy was prominently placed in the school's trophy cabinet. Years later, someone mailed him that trophy. They had found it in a trash can mm. when the school was remodeled. Jim said, given enough time, all your trophies will be trashed by someone else. And from our previous segment tonight, mm -hmm. some of your records might be trashed by those of the opposite sex who had a little change <clears throat> of heart and something else. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask when we were in that segment, I'll just backtrack there real quick. How many years do you think it will be before every record is erased in female sports and women's sports? It'll only take them long if they allow it everywhere. Yeah, if if they allow it everywhere, it'll just be a matter of time where the, the books will be erased. Yep. I just thought how sad that is. Like an entire sport will be erased. So the females up to the this year, basically, they're the end of the records. That's the end of the records for female sports. So that they're like the all-time champion. Mm -hmm. So they got the eternal record, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> living to create an earthly legacy is a short-sighted goal. A wiser use of time is to build an eternal legacy. You weren't put on earth to be remembered. You were put here to prepare for eternity. You weren't put on earth to be remembered. <laughs> you were put here to prepare for eternity. That's a good one. One day you will stand before God and he will do an audit of your life. A final exam before you enter eternity. The Bible says, remember, each of us will stand personally before the judgment seat of God. Each of us will have to give a personal account to God. Fortunately, God wants us to pass this test. So he has given us the questions in advance. From the Bible, we can surmise that God will ask us two crucial questions. First, what did you do with my son, Jesus Christ? God won't ask about your religious background or doctrinal views. The only thing that will matter is, did you accept what Jesus did for you? And did you learn to love and trust him? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Mm, second, what did you do with what I gave you? What did you do with your life? All the gifts, talents, opportunities, energy, relationships, and resources God gave you. Did you spend them on yourself? Or did you use them for the purposes God made you for? 
Preparing you for these two questions is the goal of this book. The first question will determine where you spend eternity. The second question will determine what you do in eternity. No, we're not going to all be sitting around singing in the choir. You, Although, I'd be okay with that. I'm, but, uh, well, yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> but the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> by the end of this book, you will be ready to answer both questions. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a good point. I love it. So the point to ponder here, living on purpose is the path to peace. Living peace? on purpose is the path to peace. Living on purpose is the path to peace. Get that, guys? First to remember from Isaiah 26.3... You, Lord, give perfect peace to those who keep their purposes firm and put their trust in you. Mm, nice. Isaiah, Isaiah 26, 26 3. 3. A question to consider for next time. What would my family and friends say is the driving force of my life? <laughs> what do you want them to say? And that does it for another edition of Digging Deeper. Visit our website to catch this podcast and many others anytime. You can also watch our live TV network, browse our on-demand content, read our controversial articles, or sign up if you feel led to join the cause for defending our Constitution. It's all on diggingdeeper.us. We appreciate you listening, and remember, visit diggingdeeper.us to learn more about what we're doing to bring truth to light.